Hello everyone, Eric Brakey here. I hope you're enjoying the Maine Republican Convention. Even if present circumstances prevent us from gathering together in person, it's important that we gather together in any way that we can and remember what it means to be a Republican. Remember what it means to be a Maine person. Remember what our heritage is and what past generations have fought for. You know, here we are, it is 200 years, our bicentennial, the founding of the state of Maine the winning of our independence from Massachusetts. And it is 245 years since Maine people fought in that early fight for our American independence and the American Revolution. This year, I think it is especially important as we have seen just how fragile freedom truly is to remember what past generations fought for and sacrificed in order to pass the torch of liberty onto us. 245 years ago in Machias, Maine, the people of Machias stood up for freedom. When the shot heard round the world at Lexington and Concord reverberated its way up north, the people of Machias heard it and took action. They declared their independence from the British. They placed a liberty pole in the town square saying that they were a free people, not beholden to the crown. But these people in Machias, they made their trade in lumber and they sold their lumber to the British military and they swore off all further trade with this new enemy. Well, the British didn't take too kindly to that. They showed up in Machias, not just with two trade vessels to try to cajole the people of Machias to engage in the lumber trade again and give them the lumber they needed to build their barracks in Boston and to build masts for their ships, but they also arrived with a great warship armed with cannons. And when the captain of that ship, Midshipman Moore, saw that liberty pole, a wooden pole with a red cap that has symbolized defiance to tyrants since the days of Julius Caesar. When he saw that liberty pole rising on the horizon, he knew exactly what it meant and he flew into a rage. He demanded that the people of Machias tear down that liberty pole or he would bombard the town with the cannons of their ship. Well, did the people of Machias surrender? Did they hide in their homes and wait for the British to go away? Of course not. That's not what Maine people do. They did what Maine people do. In the face of tremendous odds, in the face of an overwhelming enemy, they grabbed their axes and pitchforks and they charged the ships. They overwhelmed the British with sheer numbers. They stole one of those trade vessels and chased after that warship as midshipmen Moore fled into the bay and they boarded and they overwhelmed the British with tremendous numbers and the British armed with pistols, got one, they, got, they each got one shot off, but by the time the battle was over, they were overwhelmed with these sheer numbers and the Battle of Machias was won. The first naval battle in the history of the American Revolution, a sign that Maine people would not be conquered, Maine people would not surrender, Maine people would fight for freedom and fight for independence. And they didn't stop there. They took those ships they seized from the British, they put the cannons on that trade vessel they, they, they first captured, they renamed it the Machias Liberty. And the Machias Liberty uh, was at the head of this new main naval fleet. They attacked British supply lines. They seized more British ships. They grew this main navy even stronger and more powerful. The British came to fear the Maine people. In fact, they returned to Machias once more to try to level the town. And this time, the, the colonial Maine people of Machias stood side by side with native Maine people of the local Indian tribes. And together, they repelled the British a second time. These were our ancestors. That's what they fought for. That was the first generation of free and independent Mainers. But that wasn't the last. Forty years later, the British came back. They occupied huge swaths of Maine in 1814, and the Maine people fought back, resisted, and petitioned our, the politicians in Boston to come to our aid because we were citizens of Massachusetts. But the people of Massachusetts, the politicians of Boston, sent no help for us. They abandoned us in our time of need. And so we stood on our own once again. We defeated, we kicked out the British, and then we turned around and we kicked out the folks from Boston as well. And this year, 2020, marks 200 years since we won our independence and we won our equal and independent statehood in this American Union. And every generation since, 
from the generation that marched north to defend our border in the Aroostook War to the generation that marched south in the Civil War to save the Union and abolish slavery to the generation that went across the ocean in World War II to liberate Europe. Every generation of Maine people have been a part of the same fight, the same struggle for freedom. And here we are today, the torch of liberty that has been passed from generation to generation today, it's in our hands. And the question is, what are we going to do with it? Ronald Reagan told us a generation ago, he said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. It's not something passed on through the bloodstream. It's something that must be fought for, protected, and handed on to the next generation for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children about that time in America when men and women were free. Well, that's our charge. That's our responsibility. This torch of liberty has been passed from generation to generation, and what are we going to do with it? Socialism is on the rise in Washington, D.C. Many never thought this day would ever come. We see here in Maine and across America, businesses shut down, governors empowered like dictators, behaving like emperors, handing down laws on their own authority alone without even consulting our elected legislators. This isn't what Maine is about. This isn't what America is about. This isn't what our ancestors fought for. It's our responsibility to stand up and fight just like they did so that we can pass that torch of liberty on to the next generation. Right now in Washington, D.C., our economy is struggling as the politicians run amok with overspending trillions and trillions of dollars coming out of the printing presses, enriching the special interests at the expense of our savings, the savings of the middle class. Unelected bureaucracies are attacking our jobs here in the state, including our lobstermen who are facing down an, a, a huge Washington bureaucracy called NOAA that says that they've got to cut the number of lobster lines off the coast of Maine in half. We never voted for these people. We never elected these people. This is regulation without representation, and it has to end. Our healthcare system is incredibly broken. Bureaucrats are strangling our nursing homes, strangling our, our, our small local family practices. The, the doctors, our doctors are overworked. Patients are grossly overpaying. But these middlemen bureaucrats in insurance companies, in hospital bureaucracies, in the government bureaucracy itself, they've they're, they've inserted themselves between us and our doctors, and they're getting rich. Healthcare has become unaffordable, unaccountable, unaccessible. I say it's time to fire the bureaucrats and put doctors and patients in charge. Jared Golden, our congressman right now, the congressman who won by trickery and deceit with ranked choice voting, and of course, corruption in Washington, D.C., manipulating our elections. He thinks that we need to socialize health care. He thinks that we need to put Washington, D.C. bureaucrats in charge of every health care decision for your life, for your family, deciding how to ration care, deciding who lives and who dies. But I say it's time to personalize care. It's time to put us back in charge. And I've got the plan to do it. We see in Washington, D.C., we see Michael Bloomberg. We see him trying to buy our constitutional freedoms. We see our Second Amendment under assault, just like we have seen for years in Augusta. And we need to send a champion to Washington, D.C., who, who, who can fight for us and show that you couldn't buy our rights in Augusta and you can't buy our rights in Washington, D.C. You know, over the last eight years, it has been my honor, my supreme honor, the, the, the greatest honor of my life to fight with all of you to fight with all of you for our Constitution, for our freedoms, for our liberties. I remember when I first came into this main Republican Party, some of you at this convention, if you were at the convention in 2012, you might remember it too. Boy, I came in like a wrecking ball, just like our president. But since that time, we have stood and fought together time and again, and we have won so many victories together, from the fight for constitutional carry to the fight for welfare reform, the fight for our health care freedoms with right to try, the fight to defeat the national popular vote, the fight to defeat red flag law, gun confiscation orders, and so many gun control proposals being pushed on us from outside interests like Michael Bloomberg. We have stood and fought together in Augusta, and now I think it's time that we stand and fight together in Washington, D.C. It's been my honor to fight alongside all of you, and if we're gonna win our freedoms back, 
if we're going to win our constitution back, if we're going to rebuild our economy and cut the spending and cut the bureaucracy, if we're going to fix health care by personalizing it, not socializing it, if we're going to stand up for our constitutional freedoms, including our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms in defense of our families, our communities, and ourselves, then I'm ready to lead that fight. I'm ready to lead that fight into the heart of the swamp in Washington, D.C. And let's have no illusions how difficult this fight is going to be. Because we're up against some very corrupt forces. Our president, Donald Trump, is up against some very corrupt forces that have been well entrenched and well established for a very long time. You know, I find it very interesting to look back and see how most presidents seem to always get a 100-day honeymoon period. But our president, Donald Trump, didn't. Now we know that they actively spied on his campaign that even before he was sworn into office, they were actively working to undermine him and try to destroy his presidency. They went after people in his administration, like Michael Flynn. They forged documents. They concealed evidence to get illegal warrants to spy on those around him. This is unacceptable. This is not our free America. And we cannot allow this to continue. We cannot allow this to go unpunished. We need to drain the swamp. We need to root out corruption. President Donald Trump has been taking it from them for years. He's been fighting back. But I've been sad to see in Washington, D.C. that far too many, even Republicans, haven't had his back against this assault from these unelected government bureaucrats that think that they don't answer to the American people, that they don't answer to our elected officials. I say it's time that we stand up to them. So, let's do it. Let's free Maine. Let's free America. Let's fix our broken health care system. Let's rebuild our economy. Let's defend our Constitution. And let's drain the swamp. Let's root out those corrupt officials and all those who abuse their power. Let's make sure that before the end of Donald Trump's second term, they're all sharing a jail cell together. I'm Eric Brakey. I'm running to represent you in the United States Congress. I would be honored to earn your vote on July 14th. Let's free Maine, let's free America, let's do it together in Washington, D.C., just like we've been fighting together in years for, for, the, for the last many years in Augusta. Enjoy the Republican convention and let's win.